Hey everyone, this is Devin Adams again, uh, Fortinet instructor here in Tempe, Arizona, and I've been recording these NSC5 lab demos, and uh, I've been recording a lot of them this weekend just so I can kind of race against the clock with these expiration dates on these VMs. Um, but uh, yeah, I'm I'm spent, I'm burnt out, so this is going to be my last one for a while. But I wanted to go ahead and take advantage of the dynamic mapping of the DMZ that we did in the last lab. And our goal for this video is going to be configuring a DMZ on our on our local FortiGate here at our headquarters. So uh, the hardware is all there. All right. And uh, just uh, just to confirm, this is another Apache server that I did. OK. Um, in fact, in GNS3, I don't know if you guys know this, but you can right click and just duplicate machines with a with a right click button there as long as they're powered off so i went ahead and i put on a ip address of 172.16.110 and this is just running a version of ubuntu lubuntu so um but let's go ahead and configure our local fortigate using the forta manager to allow that dmz access to go through so this is kind of going to be a review for what what we did down here at our data center so uh let's log into our windows machine there we are. It looks like we're already in the local uh, Forta Manager from our last lab. Haha, -ha, look at that. Booting me up. All right, no big deal. So let's let's log in. Here we are. And the very first thing I'm going to check is my device manager. And you will notice, look, oh, look at all that beautiful in-synced policy packages, synchronizations. So everything's good. Um, but I am going to look at the FortiGate, the local one, the local one specifically because I cannot remember if I configured that interface for that IP address. So uh, let's go to interfaces. All right. All right. And port four does not have anything on it. And I'm just going to confirm that that was port four by hovering in GNS3 over that local FortiGate. And it should give me a little screen tip there. Yeah. So, um, all right, let's go ahead and fix that. That's not a big deal. All right. So let's put an IP address on that port four. So we'll give an alias of DMZ, DMZ. Don't forget, you can also do your roles. Now, what do roles do? In the security fabric, it does identify different interface pairs. Um, but really all it's there for is to hide settings that might screw up uh, configuration. So I'll just, I'll just use it. Not a big deal, but here we go. So it's going to be a one, seven, two, one, six, one, two, five, four, which is going to be the IP address of the FortiGate's DMZ interface. And I will have no access whatsoever. Well, maybe ping access just so we can test connectivity if we need it. All right, that looks good to me. So I'm gonna hit okay. All right, hopefully that took. All right, man, I gotta get a, gotta get a faster computer here. Ooh, it didn't take, ah. Oh. Repetition, right? It's the mother of all learning. So here we go. Let's try that again. DMZ. Our role is going to be DMZ. Our IP address is going to be 172.16.1.254. All right. Sounds good. Do a little ping access. Okay. Map to policy interface. I, I did not even know. We can do that from there. That is awesome. Because remember, we did a DMZ last time. So that works. All right. We hit OK. There we go. So I must have screwed something up there. I'm just going to hit F5 on my keyboard to refresh the GUI. All right. There it is. Beautiful. All right. So we have that up. Now the next thing we have to do is we have to go to our um, our policy and objects. See, it's getting late, I'm starting to blink out here. And this is pretty neat. 
this is pretty neat. So remember, the object database is the same across the ADOM. So um, that's also another option that we could explore here, like maybe putting branch offices, headquarters, also data centers, if those are our different flavor of FortiGates into their own separate ADOM, all right? Uh, but we can take advantage of the VIP already there, okay? So if we go to our firewall policy and we go to our virtual IP address, yeah, we can do dynamic mapping here, which is kind of cool. So what we can do here is say, hey, you know what? Per device mapping. And we can say, uh, what device? Well, that's going to be our local FortiGates. Okay. And it's going to be the public IP address of something that we own. Now remember, we're just making believe here, so, okay. And it's gonna be mapped to 172, 16, one, I believe I did 10, all right? So that way we don't have to have duplicate VIP rules or duplicate uh, uh, virtual IP address objects. We can just take advantage of that dynamic mapping, all right? Here we go. Sweet. All right, let's see if that worked. So we're going to have to go to our, uh, let's see here. Oh, our firewall. My, my resolution is a little bit small here, guys. Sorry. We're going to have to go back to policy packages and our HQ. And we called that antivirus. And that's kind of silly now, you know, but that's okay. We'll just roll with it. And now we're going to add a new firewall rule. And we'll just call this web server. And it's going to be WAN to the DMZ. All right. Source IP address will leave the same. But destination address will do our VIP object, which is kind of nice of that dynamic mapping so don't mind what it says there all right because uh it's gonna it's gonna apply to the right place here we'll drop it i promise so uh accept all right and then our services because we're, we're we're not gonna want anything but uh web let's see am i missing it here do 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 Destination address, there we go, services. I'm just gonna select the HTTP and the HTTPS. So there we are, I hit okay. And there it is. So WAN to the DMZ source. All right, looks good, looks good, looks good. Sounds perfect. So our installation target should still be our local FortiGate. Now this side is modified because we changed the we changed the IP address on port four. And then this one right here is because we changed the policy package that it was assigned to. So uh, now we just have to do a right click and do install wizard. All right, and we'll hit next. It does push down those options for the device changes too when you do a policy install. So, all right, there we are. Local FortiGate, hit install. And then once again, I'm just going to hit pause there so you guys don't have to watch this drying paint. So here we go. All right. As you can see, it says OK. All right. And we are back in our synchronized settings. All right. OK, perfect. So how do we how do we actually test this? So the best way to test this would actually be from an outside source not from our internal. Uh, we can always try it out though. Are you guys ready? So 10.200.1.10. Is it gonna give me an Apache server or not? Yeah. I was gonna say, that might be a little bit weird with our, our rules there. Let me try it from the actual outside world, quote unquote outside world, so. Here we go. This is from the remote side. 
Alright. So 10.200.1.10. And there it is. There's our Apache server. So uh, once again, it was just acting a little bit wonky there when I tried to do it because I was from the internal side and I didn't write a rule from the internal to the DMZ. So, but you saw that when we actually went out to the real world, the real world in our lab environment, this remote PC somewhere out on the internet, uh, the VIP did manage to come through. So we pushed that all down using the Forda Manager and all was right with the world. So there you guys go. Uh, I think I am done for a while here. Our lab's getting pretty, pretty nice and complex here also, just to show you the power that you can use in GNS3 to really iterate your, your principles uh, when you're studying for the NSC5 and getting familiar with the Forda Manager. So uh, once again, guys, we just took advantage of dynamic mapping for that VIP object and assigned it to a different public IP address to an internal web server, but now on our local FortiGate. And that is just some more of the power of the Forda Manager. So, all right, I'll end it there. And uh, I don't know when I'm going to record next, but hopefully it won't be too long, guys. Um, I hope somebody enjoys this, and I will see you guys later. So.